We have a quorum. Now I'll move over and we'll do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Um, if we have new town meeting members here, if you wish to make a statement, ask a question or something, raise your hand. I will recognize you and then call on you. Do not come forward to the microphones till I call on you. Uh, and Ms. Goodrich will be reading the uh, uh, articles doing, during this meeting. So... I guess we could begin with Article 1. <clears throat> hmm? There's a test question. Oh, oh, you want, in other words, see if your microphone works. So I'm not your microphone, your voting machine works. Looks like a good vote. Okay, we ready? Um, yeah, that's all. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so the first thing we're going to do before we get to the motions and Ms. Goodrich is to hear from the boards and committees that have reports for us. I guess the first would be the Board of Selectmen. Good evening. Um, the Auburn Select Board makes the following recommendations on the special town meeting warrant. Article two, the Select Board voted to recommend approval of this article. Article three, the Select Board voted to defer to the petitioner on this article. Articles four through 22, the Select Board voted to recommend approval of these articles. Respectfully submitted the Auburn Select Board Sarah Ruffley, Chair, Dan Carpenter, Vice Chair, Stephen Chambers, Ann Kavanaugh, Todd Green. Okay, and now the Finance Committee. Good evening, I'm Kevin Kennedy, I'm the Chair of the Auburn Finance Committee. The Finance Committee makes the following positions. Article two, the Finance Committee recommends approval. Article three, the Finance Committee defers to the petitioner. Articles four and five, the Finance Committee recommends approval. Article 6, the Finance Committee does not recommend approval. Article 7 through 21, the Finance Committee recommends approval. And on Article 22, the Finance Committee defers to the petitioner due to its initial non-financial impact. Respectfully submitted, Kevin Kennedy, Chair, Michael Marshall, Vice Chair, Edward Coleman, Patrick Jones, Trevor Sansusi, George Graham, and Stephen Consilvio. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other boards or committees to make a report? Seeing none, then why don't we get to Article 2, Ms. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me? Probably a little louder. I think he needs to turn it up. It is.
Test. Test. Better? Okay. Ms. Moderator, Article 2, to see if the town meeting will vote to amend Article 3 of the May 2nd, 2023 annual town meeting as follows. Increase line item 011-222-5308, volunteer recognition from $0 to $800. Increase line item 011-292-5304, town audit from $27,000 to $35,000. Increase line item 011-292-5305, professional services from $22,000 to $25,000. Increase line item 011-292-5301, advertising from $3,200 to $5,700. Increase line item 011-322-5781, Reserve fund from $250,000 to $275,000. Increase line item 011-322-5782. Salary wage from $60,000 to $80,000. Increase line item 011-352-5780. Conferences, meetings, and cert certifications from $4,000 to $6,500. Increase line item 011-522-5780. Conferences and meetings from $50 to $2,050. Increase line item 011-992-5242. Equipment maintenance from $27,000 to $32,000. Increase line item 012-111-511108, patrol from $2,337,005 to $2,400,450. Add new line item body cam store storage from zero to $16,000. Increase line item 012211-511. 511113, firefighters from $3,299,247 to $3,442,255. Increase line item 012211-5130, fire overtime from $300,000 to $380,000. Increase line item 012212-5582, fire protective gear from $50,000 to $70,000. Increase line item 012212-5580, fire clothing uniforms from $36,000 to $39,200. Add new line item 0. 14112-5801, sidewalk pedestrian safety from $0 to $50,000. Increase line item 014272-5241, fleet maintenance motor vehicle repair from $260,000 to $310,000. Increase line item 014912-5480, cemetery gas from $3,500 to $4,500. Increase line item 701-5781, contingency from $25,000 to $50,000. Increase line item 015422-538602, contracted services from $144,012 to $219,012. Decrease line item 019-101-5175, group health from $8,500,000 to $8,400,000. Increase available funds and ambulance reserve for appropriations account from $1,504,000 to $1,667,149, and further to approve any amended fiscal year 2024 budget for the Town of Auburn to 
$207,136 or act on anything relative thereto. Do I have a second? I do. And now before we get to Mr. Kazanovich, Mr. Uh, Moderator? I want you to make the amendment, please. Okay, I have a motion to amend Article 2. Further, all the items in Article 2 are exactly the same as they were in, in the town meeting warrant, except for the one that says increase line item 011-992-5242 equipment equipment maintenance from $27,000 to $32,000. It should now be amended to increase line item 011-922-5242 equipment maintenance from $27,000 to $32,000. Do I have a second? And again, now before we get to Mr. Kazanovich, let's have a vote on that amendment, please. All those in favor of amending uh, as as um, Ms. Goodrich just wrote, or please signify by raising their hands. Huh? Oh, click it. I'm, <laughs> that's right, we click now. <laughs> yes, click. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay. Do I shut it off or do you? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. It's about 78 to 2 to 0. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Kazanovich, would you like to speak on this? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, can everyone hear me? Uh, for those of you who I have not had the pleasure of meeting, uh, new town meeting members, I'm Ed Kazanovich. Uh, town manager, and I'd like to provide to you uh, an update on the financial uh, uh, condition of the town uh, that would require your consideration for the Warren articles this evening. I have about an hour and a half presentation, but I'll try to move as quickly through it as possible. Actually, it's about 10 minutes, so uh, please bear with me. So when we looked at the um, conclusion of our annual town meeting, which was on May 2nd, uh, we've adjusted the revenue sources as follows. Our local receipts, we were allowed to increase by 211,000 in change as a result of the actuals received through June 30th, which we did not know at the time we came to town meeting. Uh, tax levy, we're increasing by $221,275 in change. That, now I'll get to that in a minute, but that's a result of some additional new growth. It's not, ta it's not taxing any more of two and a half uh, than it did at the annual town meeting. Uh, and available funds primarily resulting from free cash totaling $1,432,549. When we look at our total local receipt enhancements of 211. It's comprised of the following line items. We reduced motor vehicle excise as a result of the UAW strike. We expect inventory is gonna decline and there's gonna be, as a result, uh, less sales in, in automotive vehicles in the short term. How long the strike is gonna last, we don't know, but we thought that would be the prudent thing to do. We were able to increase our excise on meals tax by 25,000 as a result of the actuals received. Payment in lieu of taxes, we normally get in $46,676 from the housing authority, but the payment did not come in, last year's payment did not come in till July, therefore we're expected to receive twice that, or $93,352. Our golf course revenue came in over $800,000, certainly it was a great year. We're hoping that we're gonna receive that level for the upcoming year, uh, so we increased it by $25,000. Um, our other financing sources, these are the indirect costs that we charge to the SOAR Enterprise Fund. Those actual costs are $60,635 
net increase to the general fund as a result of those reimbursements. Trash services, we reduced by 96,000. We anticipated a trash increase to meet our contractual obligations for not only collection, but disposal. We deferred any increase until the second half of the year. So we basically cut that revenue stream in half. Our license and permits, we got a, a 300 and some odd thousand dollar permit from Eastland Partners that was recognized in July for a housing project, 40B project on the west side of town that is gonna be for about 325 rental units. And we're recognizing um, a higher rate of return on our investments and um, as a result of the interest rates going up. Uh, so uh, we added $75,000 to that for a total of $211,187.94. Uh, looking up top, you can see we increased our tax levy by $221,000 and change, that's due to the added new growth. We estimated 500. That certification was came into us in September by the Department of Revenue. That came in at 721. <coughs> new growth gets added to the levy in addition to two and a half. So it doesn't tax any more of two and a half by recognizing that additional revenue. As you can see, our free cash, uh, and I'll have a schedule on this, uh, the request before you tonight is for an additional $1,051,331.19. We also got a certification on our SOAR retained earnings. Um, that came in in September as well. Uh, we're asking that $80,000 be used for a outside warrant article um, in the warrant tonight. Our ambulance revenue um, under Article 2 we have made a recommendation to add four additional firefighters with a start date of January 1. Two of those are gonna be funded through general fund revenues. The other two are gonna be funded solely through ambulance receipts. Um, there is a warrant article requesting a, that a sum of money be voted from perpetual care. That's $3,100. And there's a warrant article for the upgrade of our um, communication system, which failed on us most recently, 134,968.81 would be coming from available funds from an account called receipts reserved from a sale of bond premium. Total available funds of $1,432,549. When we look at the requests that are before you tonight and the additional revenue that I just identified, we will be requesting a budget of $82,237,312 and change offset by an equal amount of revenue. That would be, um, that would tax at a rate of just on just a little over one half of a percent of of a total of two and a half percent is allowed under prop two and a half that's a utilization rate of 21.13 what does that mean that means we're taxing a fraction of two and a half we're adding about 1.1 million dollars to our excess levy um so that's good news we're, once again we're not taxing uh to the full levy of two and a half When we look at Article 2, as read by Ms. Goodrich, uh, as you can see highlighted in the yellow, that's the amendment you just made. There was a typo on the org. Um, and so that, that has just been voted by you to be amended. The total request under Article 2 is $495,453. When we look at all the other articles, Articles 4, Articles 3 to 22, the total request is $1,370,650. 
total request before you tonight for all warrant articles, if approved, $1,866,103. As you can see, the outside articles, only 101,250,000 is coming from general fund revenues, 80,000 from enterprise funds, 1,051,331 from free cash, and 138,068.81 from available funds. When we look at the excess levy history, as it relates to the current year, if you look at the top bar, FY24, we're taxing at a rate of 0 0.53. If you look all the way down, we haven't taxed a two and a half since 2012, and it may even go back earlier than that. There are some years we didn't even tax any of two and a half. When we look at our excess levy, that would put us at 9,303,000 and change. That savings since 2012 resulted in savings to the tax base, you as well as the commercial and industrial tax base, $67,224,144. In the final slide, as we look at our excess levy value, as compared to other communities in central Massachusetts, we stand at the top. If you look at Charlton, Leicester, Sutton, Oxford, Millbury at the bottom, they're all taxing to two and a half. Our excess levy, although this is a snapshot for the current, uh, for last fiscal year, not this fiscal year, will be at 9.3. We far exceed any other community in central Massachusetts in terms of excess levy. What does that mean? It means we're saving the taxpayers uh, money every year by not tax taxing to two and a half. So that's the good news, and I'm, I'm proud to, to, to show this slide because it's, it's, we're very proud of, of what we have done over the past 10 years. So with that, Mr. Moderator, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions as it relates to Article 2, since that's the article we're addressing right. at this point. Are there any questions on Article 2 for Mr. Kazanovich? I think I see a hand way over on the left. Please raise your hands high because the lights in here are not good. <laughs> Go ahead. So great question, Ellen, and we're happy to report that we've started a sidewalk initiative as a result of a priority that has been identified by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we plan on building this into the annual operating budget every year. Certainly there have been some concerns about some existing sidewalks that have been raised most recently at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. We are also conducting through a study with CMRPC, a sidewalk program that's gonna rate our sidewalks, prioritize our sidewalks, uh, that will give us the tool to make some recommendations for not only the repair of sidewalks, but for the implementation and creation of new sidewalks. Thank you, and I, I want to give credit to Brooke Hulkerin, who's our energy manager, who does a fantastic job in, in collecting that data so we can make a, an educated decision. So. Yes, I see another hand up back on the left. Hmm. Oh, yeah, by the way, identify yourself, please. That's Precinct 4. This is for my own information. Um, which I overlooked this before, is uh, line item 0113225782, salary wages from 60 to 80,000. Now that's the reserve fund. I looked in the book and a couple of years ago it was like 172,000, I think then it was 57,000, 
and 60,000 now going up to 80,000. Do we have employees in the reserve fund? No, we don't. So uh, great question. Uh, certainly, I think it all depends on the timing of those recommendations. So certainly, we pad the salary and wage reserve account at times when we're negotiating at the table, and we don't know what the value of those negotiations are going to result in. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we've had some difficulty in hiring and retaining employees because other communities are uh, offering a better wage than we are. Those are something that w that's something that we constantly keep an eye on. Most recently, we hired uh, two engineers. Those positions were vacant for over a year. We had difficulty filling them. We, are, we had to offer a higher wage in order to, to fill those positions. So that gives us some flexibility to, to make those decisions and to bring some qualified people on board. Okay. Just one more. Uh, line item 015422. 538602 contract services. It looked like it was a substantial increase from 144K to 219,000. What other new contractual services are we? So that is a recommendation we made for Auburn Youth and Family Services. So um, as a result of um, um, a major uptick in social service needs, there are currently 35 families that have unmet needs because we don't have the staff to deal with those social needs. We are proposing through a recommendation through the Youth Commission, uh, as well as discussions with AYFS through the Auburn Youth Commission, that a master clinician be hired to deal with these unmet needs. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, Therefore, I will ask for the vote on the amended Article 2. I would think, no, what do you mean when it has, you know, yeah. I think if this can, I, yeah, I don't see any more. Okay, <clears throat> so just one moment, please. Vote. <clears throat> 76 yes, two no, two abstain. Yes, somebody. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I want to come to the mic, but I just can't hear you. Whoever is. <clears throat> Delay for a lot of people who are trying to vote. So we just want to make sure that everybody's vote gets counted. Yeah, that, so can we're we just, not, we're not trying we, to rush it. No, I know. Can we just, when we're ready to close the vote on the next one, can we just pause and make sure that it's working? Right, That's and obviously, by the yeah. way, everybody voted. It's 80 votes. Okay. <clears throat> all right, 70, excuse me, just 76 to two to two. Okay, Articles 3. <laughs> Ms. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to designate Whit Whitman Bailey Drive as a public road and maintain it in accordance with standards that apply to all other roads in Auburn. This includes the abutting sidewalks as well as sewage and utility services contained herein or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There is, do you have an amendment, I guess we'd call it, Ms. Goodrich? 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that we postpone Article 3 indefinitely. All those, oh, wait a minute, we have to put up the uh, voting. <clears throat> Was there another question? A question? There's a second. Second, good. Is there a question? There is, I hear, okay. Wish I could see. Danny Lodges, <laughs> Precinct 4. Um, that is a brand spanking new street with brand new sidewalks. Those uh, $1.2 million duplexes up there. And I don't know why, if they're paying their taxes, they can't get a public street. That's a lot of money that that maybe 20 duplexes up there are generating in revenue. And I know if you paid that amount of taxes on 1.2 of their 600 and something thousand dollars per side, um, it's a lot of money that uh, they're paying in their taxes. I don't see any reason why we should put this off indefinitely. This should be a public road. Uh, I, I've walked it and I've talked to everybody up there and I don't think it's right that the amount of taxes they're paying that it can't be a public road. It's a short road, maybe 700 feet long. It, brand new sidewalks, everything. Mint street and I've seen us take streets in the town of Auburn that were in shambles and accept them as public roads that the builders just abandoned. And I, I strongly suggest and hope that you, you make it a public road. Mr. Kazanovich. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just want to let town meeting members know this request to withdraw came directly from the petitioners themselves. So uh, they sent a letter to the planning board, uh, which we have, uh, that we presented to the board of selectmen at their meeting last night. Uh, the matter is before the planning board. There are some uh, concerns by the planning board. The, the roads were not built to town standards and they have some uh, concerns about that. So they're working with the petitioners uh, so this matter may come back before the board if some enhancements are made, but I, uh, other than telling you that the petitioner asked this to be withdrawn, uh, that's why this, uh, this motion for our amendment to postpone indefinitely was made. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, then why don't we turn on the voting light? The names aren't going up. Oh, they did. They just did. Okay. Yeah. I know. Mr. Moderator? Yes. There's a question on the floor on what we're voting on, whether we're voting on the amendment to postpone or the original article. No. So we're turning it off? Oh, okay, that's something got to be fixed. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Now we're, we're voting on Article 3. Postpone. Now do you think we can turn it off? Okay.
Okay, the vote is yes, 68, no, 9, and abstention, 5. Okay. Ms. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 4. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to amend Article 12 of the May 2nd, 2023 annual town meeting so as to increase the Medicaid reimbursement amount approved for fiscal year 2024 from $125,000 to $140,000 for Medicaid receipts within the general fund revenues to better align with actual and anticipated general fund revenues to the Auburn School Department operating budget for fiscal year 2024 to fund supplies and medical, therapeutic, and educational services for significantly disabled special needs students, as well as tuition and transportation to and from outside placements or within the district for special needs students or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? Did you get him? Okay, are there any questions? All comments. Hmm? Okay, so I seeing none, we will now vote. I think so. Okay, 80 yes, no to, abstain one. I think they're yeah, okay. All right, good. Article 5. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 5, to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate the sum of $95,800 from free cash for the installation of new or the upgrade of security doors and windows at various schools within the Auburn School District or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, we shall vote. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 81 yes, no, no, and no abstain. Article 6. Now, on Article 6, before uh, Ms. Goodrich reads it, Article 6 is dealing with... Um, the fourth, uh, the fourth article in an annual town meeting, that normally has, always has borrowing in it. So therefore, it takes a two-thirds vote originally, and it will take a two-thirds vote tonight. Ms. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 6. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to repurpose CIP funds by amending Article 4 of the School Department Capital Improvement Budget for fiscal year 2021, approved at the June 2nd, 2020 annual town meeting and borrowed at the fall 2022, number 3020-582266,
as so to appropriate the balance of $30,000 from the original appropriation of $230,000 for the Bryn Mawr parking lot expansion and repurpose said balance of $30,000 to the Central Office Administration Building for window replacement and building upgrades or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There is. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, we shall vote. I would think so. I haven't seen any for a couple of seconds here. Okay. Vote. Yes, 53. No, 28. 53, 28, and uh, 1. Okay. Article 7. Ms. Goodrich. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I've got to make sure. 53281? That's two thirds. Hmm? It failed. Oh, okay. It didn't get the two thirds, you're saying? Yeah, okay. That's what I had to check. Well, failed. Thank you. Article 7. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 7. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $5,250 from general fund revenues for firewall, sec firewall security review or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There is. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none. Why don't we vote? I would guess so, huh? You think? Yeah. Okay. Um, 79 to 0 to 0. Uh, article 8. Ms. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 8. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to repurpose $90,000 from ambulance reserve for appropriations account by amending Article 4 of the May 3rd, 2022 town meeting replace ambulance as follows. First, to appropriate $15,000 for personal protective equipment slash turnout gear for firefighters. And second, to appropriate $75,000 to replace garage doors at fire headquarters or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There is. And again, since this is a, a based on an Article 4, this too will be a two-thirds vote. Are there any questions? Or comments on seeing none, we shall vote.
I would guess so. Yeah, won't you? Okay. Oh, wait, yeah. Okay, yeah. The vote is 80 to 2 to 0. So this were this this passes. Certainly got the two thirds. The next article is Article Nine. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article Nine: To see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate the sum of two hundred and eight thousand four hundred and sixty-eight dollars and eighty-one cents from bond premium proceeds and two hundred and fifty-five thousand five hundred and thirty-one dollars and nineteen cents from free cash for radio infrastructure equipment and improvements to the town's public safety communication system, or act on anything relative there. Is there a second? Now, before we get to this particular article, there is a need for an amended uh, amendment. Ms. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to amend um, the article as follows. To see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate the sum of $134,968.81 from bond premium proceeds and $182,031.19 from free cash for radio infrastructure equipment and improvements to the town's public safety communication system or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second on the amendment? There is a second. Are there any questions on the amendment? Um, Mr. Moderator, can Yes, I Mr. Kazan, I was going to say, do you have something to tell us, Mr. Kazanovich? So there appears to be an, an error in the amendment. Um, in the amendment? So the sum of $134,968.81 would be coming from bond premium proceeds in the original amount of 255,531.19 from free cash. It looks like though both of those values were reduced by the same sum of money. It should, should only impact the first one. So, so are the figures correct as they are in the amendment now, Mr. Kazanovich? If I may, I will give this to Ms. Goodrich and she can read it as I have prepared. Yeah. <clears throat> I will as soon as I. Well, we have the that we first got to deal with the amendment we have, and then he wants to amend it again. Uh, I would rather. I would rather turn down the original amendment and then put in a motion to amend. So let Mr. Casanova give us all the information. Then I will recognize you to what I do what I just said. Okay. Mr. Actually, Mr. Moderator, I can give this to Mr. Boland. He, he could present it as an amendment. But would you like us to vote the First Amendment down first? I would think we should. Hmm? So that's right. So in order to do that now, I can't ask to see your hands. We have to vote. He said they can be huge. Show hands. We can? Okay. By the way. Praise God. We can do this to, to get rid of that amendment we're trying to get rid of. We can do that with a show of hands. All those in favor of eliminating that First Amendment, really show that. It's been eliminated. Thank you. Now we're, uh, now we're out to the amendment that we want to vote on. All right, Mr. Moderator, Greg Bowling, Precinct 4. Um, I'm going to amend the original Article 9 by replacing the uh, sum of 208400 $68.81 from bond premium proceeds with $134,968.81 from bond premium proceeds. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Is there, but well, that's right. That's right. So that's your, you make it, that's the amendment you're making. Is there a second? There is a second. <clears throat> Are there any questions or comments? Um, Seeing none, we'll vote on the amended article.
Okay, I would think so, don't you? Okay. Oh, yeah, I see you. Good. No rush. We're moving nicely. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay, there it is. The vote, 79 to 2 to 0. <coughs> yes, somebody has a question? Yes. Huh? Oh, okay, sure. Bob Kutupis, Precinct 1. Are there any other dead areas? I appreciate the, I'm, I'm in favor of the, mo the motion, but are there any other dead areas in Auburn that we should be thinking about fixing in the future? And when you have a dead area, are the residents notified? Huh? I have no idea. Um, our fire chief is coming up to the mic to hopefully answer that question. Uh, through the moderator, uh, thank you for the question. Um, so I'm assuming many of you received the letter that went out in your town meeting packet. Um, so the radio system that you're voting on here, uh, this um, duplexer that's gonna go up on Prospect Street, the simulcast system, that'll get us up to about 93% coverage on the uh, fire side. There is a possibility that we may be back here in a year or two uh, to talk about a fourth simulcast site but in consultation with our radio consultant we didn't feel that it was prudent to make that request now because we want to get the equipment installed on prospect street and then we want to work with it for a little bit and we want to see it's going to dramatically improve our coverage right out of the gate but we're still going to need to identify where some of those dead spots are to your question about whether or not the residents are notified there's really nothing to notify the residents of about because what it is it's it's our portable radio coverage so when we're and i'll give you an example if i was trying to to try to call our communication center from inside this room that's very difficult it, it's difficult on a five watt portable radio to try to get through all of this concrete the glass all of those things so it doesn't necessarily it, it doesn't impact the resident it impacts our operation more whether we have to use a vehicle radio or a portable radio. Uh, but like I said, this simulcast system on the Prospect Street, it's gonna dramatically improve what we have now, but we wanna work with that for a little bit and we wanna try to identify where some of those other gaps may be before we talk about the potential of a fourth site. Thank you for the clarification. Through the moderator. Uh, yeah. Just to mention, 
the reason for the reduction of the $75,000 is because we did receive an insurance claim on the failure of the Rochdale Street. So we received a check for $75,000 and that allowed us to reduce the total ask. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> okay. Okay, Ms. Goodrich. Article 10. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $100,000 from free cash for conceptual designs of a proposed fire station on West Street or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There is a second. Are there any questions or comments? Mr. Moderator, I have an amendment. You do? I do. Okay, I don't have it, so thank you. Mr. Moderator, I move to amend as follows, to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $100,000 from free cash for conceptual designs of a proposed fire station in West Auburn or act on anything relative thereto. Oh, okay. In West Auburn replaces in West on Street. West Street, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, is there a second on that amendment? There is a second. Is there, are there any questions? Yes. Uh, John Stencil, Precinct 5. I was wondering, what's the thinking to get us to this point? What are we thinking of doing here? I'm, so, I'm so. Hmm? Somebody's got an answer? The fire chief is going, that's all they are. That's what I said. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Stencil, can you just ask your question again? Sure. Uh, so the question is about us to this point. So as many of you know, as we've updated to the town meeting before, for the last five years, we've been exploring uh, the possibility of a joint public safety facility uh, between police and fire. COVID did slow us down a little bit. Uh, but over the last couple of years, under the direction of Kevin Kennedy, who was the chair of the uh, Public Safety Municipal Use uh, Committee, ultimately a proposal was brought to the Board of Selectmen uh, with an estimated price tag of $78 million for a joint facility. And the Selectmen opted not to move that to the voters uh, because of the uh, price tag on that. And to be quite honest with you, we were just as surprised. Uh, when we started this project five years ago, the estimated price tag on that building was about $42 million. So over the last five years, with construction escalation, uh, materials, all of those things, it really drove the price up significantly. So the board voted to abandon the plan for a joint public safety facility. And because West Street Station 2 is of the three public safety buildings between police and fire that is the one in the most desperate need of repair they opted to move forward with a plan to replace a fire station only in that area so five years ago town meeting voted one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to explore the public safety building over the last five years, that money has been expended on environmental studies, various conceptual designs for that project. That money is gone. And the architects actually, uh, the firm that we've been using, they've been very, very good to work with. They've actually done quite a bit of work uh, for us that they actually didn't charge us for above and beyond the $150,000. So this $100,000 is now to explore the conceptual designs of a fire station only, not to include the police. And the reason for the amendment tonight is originally, we were looking at West Street as the location because for various reasons, it's already town owned property, but there's a lot of challenges that come with that as it relates to the school department in terms of potential relocation, relocation for us if ultimately construction happens. Um, We've recently been made aware that there are potentially some other properties that may be coming available in West Auburn. So the reason for the amendment tonight 
is we did not want to hamper ourselves uh, specifically to West Street with this vote. So it allows us to pursue other options that may become available uh, in West Auburn. I hope that answers your question, Mr. Stencil. Okay, thank you, Chief. Any other questions? Yes, it's about. Greg Boeing, Precinct 4. Is the consideration that this may replace fire headquarters with the West Street side, or have you not gotten to that point yet? So over the so the question was, uh, will this replace fire headquarters? So over the last five years, you may have heard me talk about this publicly. When we were looking for a single site, the location of that single site was critical in order to consider whether or not we were going to close Auburn Street and West Street and go into one joint facility. That property does not exist. The town on two separate occasions has put out an RFP to property owners along Southbridge Street, Washington Street, trying to find an area that would not affect response times dramatically in either district. That property, as I said, does not exist. No property owners came forward. So the recommendation of the committee and ultimately that went to the board was we would maintain a two fire station system. So if we construct a new fire station out in the West End, the Auburn Street fire station would still remain a fire station and we would have a two station set up in two districts as we do today. Yes, the, the proposed building that would be constructed out west at West Street would become the new fire headquarters and Auburn Street would essentially assume the duties of Station 2. Are there any other questions? Yes, way up back. Thank you. Ken Frost, Precinct 4. Since this article is dealing with a new West Auburn fire station. Why are we spending $75,000 to replace the, the doors on the fire station on West Street? Whereas if it was building that $78 million dual safety building, they were not replacing the fire doors at that time. So the earlier article for the $75,000 was to replace yeah. the garage doors at fire headquarters on Auburn Street. That will remain a fire station. I thought it was West Street. No. Okay. It's fire headquarters. That's okay. Any other questions? Yes, up here. Amy Margaret Castellano, Precinct. Uh, one, I have a couple of questions and I won't take too long. Um, more clarification. With this Article 10, do we anticipate the school administration build, building being any part of consideration or is that staying intact and not even part of this study? So, so that's a good question. So one of the major hurdles that we had as we did the exploratory for utilizing West Street as a location was the relocation of school administration. Um, which was going to put a major impact on the school department. So, as I mentioned, a couple of other properties outside of West Street have come up as a possibility that we're exploring. But if a fire station was to be built on West Street, school administration would stay intact. It would call for the demolition of just the right part of the building where the fire station exists and then the fire station would actually be relocated on that property so it wasn't actually right up against the school department and the school department would be able to stay there not only through construction but until a plan was for them to move. Okay. Thank you for that. So my second part to this question is I myself voted according to the school building being impacted potentially by a safety complex, and that is Article 6, specifically referring to the window replacement. And I did see that that vote was voted down, and I don't know if anybody else here had that similar feeling on what was being interpreted with that $30,000 request. And I don't know how that changes this evening or if it needs to go to the spring meeting, but I just needed to also come forth and make that statement that I think that these articles, I don't know how they're 
numbered and presented, but the num how these were presented this evening was not in fair consideration of all the facts. And Uh, that's a great question. I think in light of the information that was just shared uh, by the fire chief, uh, in consideration for Article 6, um, a town meeting member could suggest to uh, revisit that article, uh, but it would have to be done by uh, a majority vote of, of the town meeting members to reconsider that warrant article. Okay. Um, Mr. Moderator, um, yes, Mr. Casanova. It, I'd like to have the school superintendent comment on on that. If I'm if, sorry, the school superintendent would like to talk uh, oh, a little certainly. bit about the, the, the window article. Certainly, the school superintendent is going to comment now on this. Ms. Thank Chamberlain. you, Mr. Moderator, uh, and I should have spoken earlier. Uh, the request for that thirty thousand um, dollars goes back a long way. Um, there had been money um, allocated through CIP for improvements to West Street going back, I think, well over five to eight years ago. Um, and that money we had kept in abeyance because at, even at that time there was discussion about the potential um, use of where our current central office is for the purposes of e whether it be public safety or fire. It was, there was a lot of uh, unknowns then. Uh, and so we respectfully understood that and understood that we shouldn't use that money to improve a building that may disappear. Um, but seemingly, as Chief Coleman has just described, situations have changed uh, since that time. And so I don't know if any of you have been to West Street lately. Uh, Mr. Fahey, I can't say enough good things about, does everything he can, and we have a functioning building for sure. But I will tell you that our windows are now unsafe in many ways. Um, they are very difficult to open if they open at all. There are windows that are loose. Um, and if it seems like, and it does seem like we may be there for some time, that this would be a prudent use of money. Um, not only do we have staff in that building, but we also support a number of students in our Encore program. Um, and we thought that this was a reasonable request at this time, given the amount of time that we have waited to really do any kind of improvements to the building for well over five years, and it's really much longer than that. So um, I, I, I should have spoken earlier. I hope you understand. We are trying to be judicious with money, but we want to take good care of the facilities that we have, given that we may be there for some time yet. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move the question of the amendment to Article 10. Okay, a motion to move. Uh, is there a second on that? Is it approved? Again. Okay, so what we're going to do is first we have to vote to amend. All those in favor of amending Article 10 as it's been presented, hmm? we're voting to move the, yeah, yeah. We're voting to move the amendment itself. All those in favor of the amendment, please show their hands, raise their hands. You did it right, fine. Now, and we'll do it with the light, all those, now that we've amended the article, all those in favor of the amended article. Hmm? We've amended the article. We just now voted. we're voting the amended article. We voted on moving the question. Yeah, oh, I'm ready, yes. We're ready. The amendment was overwhelming. That's right. That's right. That's right. I see what you're saying. Yes. No, we've already amended. Now we're voting the amended article. So this is the amended article that we're voting on. It's been amended. We are voting on it as an amended article, no matter what it says up top. 
Is that clear to everybody? Thank you. Moving the question makes us vote. It's not a separate motion. We moved the question, which means we're now voting on, we voted on the amendment, that was the hand raised. We are now voting on the amended motion, which means you are voting either yes or no to appropriating $100,000 to the drawings of a fire station in West Ottawa. That's exactly what it is. Moving the question is a parliamentary procedure. It's not a separate motion. I, I understand that you have to do that's fine, but that's what happened. We already voted on the amendment. On the okay, I guess. We, I think the vote's taken. Right? Yeah. Okay, the vote is yes, 63, no, 11, and abstention, none. So 63, 63, 11. Yes. Oh, he's, is he a Are you a town meeting member, sir? Yeah, well, then please sit down with the town meeting members. He is sitting with the town meeting members. He's I, sitting in a wheelchair area. Oh, okay. Okay, question? I, I, I believe we should be voting on Amendment 6, on, on Article 6. Wasn't that the $30,000 amendment? It's very confusing here. And some other people think it is, too. No, no, we are voting on Article 10. Okay. That's what we just voted on. So what we did do, basically, is this. We changed West Street to West Auburn. And that's what that's what the amendment was. Any other questions? Yes. yes. Amy Margaret Castellano, Precinct One. I'd like to make a motion to reconsider a vote on Article Six. Second. Okay, let me get to Article Six here. I need to write that down and sign that. Margaret. So there is a motion now to reconsider the vote on Article 6. And I'm just getting out Article 6 here. So Article 6 was a two-thirds vote. And excuse me, Ms. Goodrich, are you there? She's not. All right. Let me read. Oh, would you please reread Article 6 for people? Article 6. To see if the town meeting will vote to repurpose CIP funds by amending Article 4 for the school department capital improvement budget for fiscal year 2021 approved at the June 2nd, 2020 annual town meeting and borrowed in the fall of 2022, number 302022-582266, so as to appropriate the balance of $30,000 from the original appropriation of $200 $130,000 for the Bryn Mawr parking lot expansion and repurpose said balance of $30,000 to the Central Office Administration Building for window replacement and building upgrades or act on anything relative thereto. Okay, so that's, that is the, re, we are reconsidering Article 6, which actually originally failed on the need for a two-thirds vote. And we do have a second, do we not, on that reconsideration, uh, uh, Ginger? Right. That's what we're going to do. That's the vote, to reconsider Article 6. So I see, is there a question on this reconsideration vote? What? Yes, sir.
Sean Parody, Precinct 5. Um, more of a comment than just a question. I mean, we all know what bad windows and what poor maintenance of a building does to your heating bills and everything else. And so eventually we're gonna have to be spending this money anyway to repair the building. So uh, the cost savings up front will probably benefit us in the long run. Just something to consider. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Well, as long as it's a town meeting number. Okay. A town meeting number. Excuse me. As long as the town meeting number moves to reconsider. I don't think that's true. I, I really don't. I, my understanding is any town meeting member. Why does somebody say the other? I don't think so. I just thought any town meeting member could seriously. I've never had the question. Okay, thank you. All right, so what we are doing now is revoting on articles because we're reconsidering it. We are. Yes, question. Danny Lodges, Precinct 4. What is the percent of the building that is being used on a daily day basis, not counting storage closets or, I, I mean, as far as I know, the only, it's only the front half of the building. I've been in it for the meetings, the school board meetings, everything. It's a, I've looked at the back half, and I can't see and replace some windows where the building is not even being used. Well, that's not true. The entire main floor of the building is used for offices and for student space. So, for instance, the students we have in the building have two very large rooms at the back of the building. The remaining back of the building is our entire business office. So the entire top floor. So if you go underneath the basement, that is storage room but the entire main floor of that building is occupied and used. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Okay, so we're gonna have now the vote to reconsider Article 6, which I guess, that's an interesting point. I'm not going to do. Yeah. Now this vote here is just to reconsider. If this vote passes, it doesn't take two thirds. If it passes, we then have to have a vote on the reconsideration itself. Oh, and the vote is 67, 12, one. Okay. So we, are, we have voted to reconsider. We now are going to deal with Article 6. We're reconsidering it. Are there any comments or questions on Article 6? This, all right, I hear that I have one up back. Ken Frost, Precinct 4. Why did the Finance Committee vote no, not to approve this article? I, I, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Had your hand. Thank you. Because, oh, no, somebody. Thank you. Uh, through, the I, com, through the moderator. Uh, so I can't speak for the entire Finance Committee, uh, but I believe it was relative to the uncertainty for the use of the West Street Station uh, at that time. Uh, 
whether it was definitively going to be utilized uh, for public safety purposes or school committee. So there was that degree of uncertainty where we didn't see, at least those of us that voted no, uh, were, didn't want to put $30,000 into a building that was not going to be um, utilized in the future. But I believe some of those concerns have been allayed here for the uh, town meeting members. Does that answer your question, sir? Any other questions before we vote or comments? Okay, we are now re-voting actually Article 6. And this is a two, remember, this is a two-thirds vote. Looks like it's done. Hmm. Oh, okay, that's still good. I was right in this. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Okay, yes, 71, no, 5, and abstention, 0. So obviously it got the two-thirds vote it needed, so Article 6 is now p passed. What was the 76, 5? 71 fire, I'm sorry. Okay, so now we're back to Article 11, aren't we, Ms. Goodrich? We are. Article 11, I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $11,000 from general fund revenues to cover costs associated with the first year implementation process for police department accreditation through the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? Yes, there is a second. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, we shall vote. You think? Mm hmm The vote is 72 to 7 to 0. Article 12. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to approve a revolving account for the Department of Development and Ex Inspectional Services pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half for the purpose of collection of revenue generated by town-owned electric vehicle 
charging stations for operation and maintenance, expenditures not to exceed $25,000 annually, report and budget shall be submitted annually to the Finance Committee, this revolving fund shall commence on passage and be in effect in all subsequent years as voted by town meeting, and further, that figure 1.0 of section 6.13 of the general bylaws be amended consistent with this article or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There are seconds, yes. Uh, are there any comments or questions, Ms. Bowen? Yeah, I apologize. Um, Greg Bowling, Precinct 4. I I'm sorry, I can't accept the legality of the end of this this motion um if we're going to amend general bylaws it can't just say consistent with this article we need to spell out what goes into that that amended bylaw so i'm happy to amend this article if somebody can tell me what the change to the bylaw would be um and probably overlook the fact that we'd be amending bylaws and appropriating money in the same article but it, this is it, it doesn't tell me what it's going to change um, I get it, but we have to be more specific in a, in a warrant article. Sorry. Mr. Kazanovich. Uh, Mr. Bowen, I, 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 there's a great catch. Um, certainly this was reviewed by town council, so I believe any section of the general bylaws that require amendment is going to require its own separate vote. Um, therefore, um, I do not have town council here uh, to consult. Um, I would suggest as a result of the issue you have just raised that uh, I would make a recommendation that we postpone this article at least till the next fall meeting till we have an opportunity to, to address that general bylaw provision. Well, on the econ, so Mr. Ball, I want to make the... Um... Uh, uh, Mr. Moderator, before... before I get a motion on that. Uh, Darlene, do you have any information to share relative to the bylaw change as referenced in this Warren article? Thank you. Um, the, uh, what we're attempting to do is just to set up a revolving account for the money that we get from the charging station yep. to be able to be uh, put towards any repairs or maintenance. Um, but I certainly understand this is uh, not specific to that. I think your question is specific. Yeah, to I don't the law. have the bylaw in front of me, but is this just adding the account number to what Mr. Mr. On? The, the light bulb just went off, so I, I know what this is in reference to. So any creation of a revolving account requires that it be added into the general bylaws there. And that's why this vote goes before town meeting. So once it's voted, it's incorporated into the general bylaws and it becomes a permanent recognized account under the general bylaws. Is this something that we could strike the amendment of the bylaw now and approve the revolving account and then fix the bylaw in the spring? No, no. in order to create a new revolving account, it requires that uh, it be incorporated into this general bylaw. Okay. So before this is something new. So when this new revision came out, we had to bring all the revolving accounts in a schedule to town meeting and they had to incorporate it into the general bylaw itself. So Mr. Bowling, what I thought you were going to do was move to postpone Article 11 and well, here my, to a my specific question is, is this, can we do this, right? Will this, yes. or will this get thrown out when we try to submit it? No, this is permissible. So okay, yes. Then no, I'm the, not going to. This then. reference, this reference is 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 um, proper. Okay. Then no, I'm not going to. Okay, it. so you have no problem then voting on Article 11. Uh, if Town Council looked at it and didn't object, then I'm fine. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those. Uh, well, we're going to vote. I can't tell you to raise your hands anymore.
You think? Oh, good. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay, the vote. 72 yes, 5 no, and then uh, no abstentions. We are now going to Article 13, Ms. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 13, I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $10,000 from general fund revenues to supplement previous appropriations to allow the Board of Health to conduct a house, household hazardous waste collection day in the spring of 2024 or act an, on anything relative thereto. Okay, there is a second. There is a second. Are, are there any questions, comments? Seeing none, we shall vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seventy four to four to zero. Article fourteen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate fifty one thousand dollars from free cash for fiscal year 2025 assesses revaluation or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? Yeah, um, Ms. Goodrich, do you have a motion now? I do, I move that we postpone Article 14 indefinitely. Uh, is there a second? Any questions or comments? Seeing none, let's just have a show of hands. Good, thank you. It's voted. The postponing indefinitely is voted. Okay, Article 15. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 15, I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $60,000 from the town of Auburn's fiscal year 2024 general fund revenues for training, support, and services, or act on anything relative thereto. Okay, uh, is there a second? There is, are there any question or comment? Uh, I think I see a question up there in the back middle. Bob Platukas, Precinct 1. Has the town explored the new state program of free tuition for adults over 25 years of age to see if it would help with, with this training or other types of training for the town free of charge. Ms. Chamberlain, do you have a, an answer to that? It's a whole new free college program at community colleges. It's the governor's program. Uh, Mr. Platukas, I had a hard time hearing the question. Could you ask that one more time? Yes, the, the governor has uh, passed a program of free tuition for adults over 25 under certain conditions 
where they can improve themselves free of charge at the community colleges. Has the town explored using that program? I mean, they train police, nurses, uh, administrators, all kinds of different so I did hear of that initiative. Um, certainly we have not been notified from the governor's office nor the Commonwealth of Mass. Certainly if there is a opportunity to educate our work staff, uh, we will do so. Uh, but this uh, request before you tonight is specifically for uh, certification of values as it relates to reval as well as software training um, and support services to, to support that, that new software. Um, the reason we suspended the prior article is because there was some overlap and redundancy when the warrant was prepared. Uh, they actually um, calculated a lesser value initially and it was uh, overwritten by this one here. Um, so that being said, uh, this is a value that has to be certified by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for our real estate values, personal property, on a three-year basis. This is what this article is attempting to do. Thank you for the clarification. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, let us vote. You think? What? Okay, seventy two five zero. Article 16. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 16. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to repurpose funds by amending Article 9, approved at the October 24, 2017, special town meeting, so as to appropriate the balance of the original appropriation of $100,000 for 064222-581850 LED streetlights and repurpose said balance of $100,000 to pedestrian, sidewalk pedestrian safety for the creation of a new municipal sidewalk program that prioritizes access and safety of pedestrians by installing new sidewalks, including but not limited to the expansion repair and replacement of existing sidewalks and signalization or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There is. Are there any questions or comments? Yes, I see somebody's hand raised. Jesus. I got it, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Christina Nashold, uh, Precinct 1. My question is around um, going back to Article 2, second from the bottom. We had approved to add a sidewalk pedestrian safety um, $50,000 to that line item. How is that in relationship to this article in terms of now we're going to add another $100,000 to that? Is that what is that what we're doing here? 
Yes, this would supplement the $50,000 already voted under Article 2. So it would be $150,000 underneath this program. Fifty, and it's our intent on an annual basis to appropriate that amount of money going forward under Article 4, the Capital Improvement Program, on an uh, ongoing basis. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, let us vote. Okay, 7150, Article 17. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 17, I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $500,000 from free cash to the town OPEB, other post-employment benefits, liability trust fund, or act on anything relative thereto. Uh, is there a second? Yes, there is. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, shall we let us vote? Seventy seven two zero. Article eighteen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> Excuse me. Article 18. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $100,000 from free cash to the town stabilization fund or act on anything relative thereto. Second. There is. Question or comment? Yes. Do I have a hand up or not? No question or comment? Okay, let's vote. <clears throat> did I have a hand up? I didn't, did I? Was there a hand up? I didn't. Okay. Yeah, it was hard to tell. Mm. 
<clears throat> you think? So you know, I take it, you know, whenever you think. Let's make it that way, whenever you think. Okay. Seventy five four zero. Article nineteen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 19. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $3,100 from the cemetery perpetual care account for the purpose of cemetery maintenance and funeral setup equipment or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There is. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, let us vote. <clears throat> Three to Eighty to zero to zero. Article twenty. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article twenty. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to appropriate $80,000 from sewer retained earnings to procure services, equipment, and materials to repair the odor control system at the Pinrock Wastewater Pumping Station or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? There is a second. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, let us vote. Ooh, boy. Gracious. Yeah. Eighty to zero to zero. Article twenty one. 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 21. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to amend Article 13 of the October 26, 2021 special town meeting so as to repurpose the appropriation of $65,000 from retained earnings from the re from the replacement of a fairway mower to the purchase of a mower or act on anything relative thereto. Are there, is there a second? There is a second. Are there any questions or comments? There is? Yes. Hi, David Ingstrom, Precinct 4. I was just curious if we got any bids on where we're getting this more from, because 65000 seems like a lot for a fairway mower. And what are we doing with the old mower? Is that going for parts? Are we selling that? What's going on with that? Okay, our DBW Director, Joanna Paquin, is making her way down to hopefully answer your question. Uh, so this would be a purchase of a new uh, green mower. Um, so it, it would be an additional mower. Um, and this is the price is based on a, a quote. So we we don't have a we wouldn't go up bid until we have the money appropriated. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, let us vote. Yeah. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Seventy one five zero. Article twenty two. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The last article, Article 22. I move to see if the town meeting will vote to amend the Town of Auburn general bylaws by deleting in Chapter 17, Traffic, Orders, Rules and Regulations, Section 17.12, Town of Auburn, spe Special Speed Regulation Number 6085, Southbridge Street Court, Section 17.13, Town of Auburn, Special Speed Regulation Number 7021, Pinehurst Avenue, Packajog Street. In Section 17.14, Town of Auburn, Special Speed Regulation Number 7021, Central Street, or act on anything relative thereto. Is there a second? Are there any questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Stencil. John Stencil, Precinct 5, what does all that mean? This question is, what does it mean? I, I can't tell you. Anybody here got an answer to that? Mr. Kazanovich. Uh, Mr. Stencil, I can tell you that the board recently uh, took a vote to rescind the speed limit from 40 to 30 on Pinehurst staff. And as part of that consideration, they did so under Chapter 90, Section 18, which gives them the authority to regulate speed um, limits on, on various streets through town. Uh, in discussion with town council and a, and a, and a designated board member, uh, we brought this to the attention of town council because it appeared to be a conflict with the general bylaw. The general bylaw, when it was voted, really took the power away from the Board of Selectmen to make that decision under Chapter 90, Section 18. 
As a result, Town Council and the Board of Selectmen agreed that the Board of Selectmen has the authority to make that vote. But Town Council suggested that we remove the speed regulations under the general bylaw just to keep it clean. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, let's vote. Is there? I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking up toward you, Dory. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I just wonder if the Chief of Police and his team were consulted on this? So I see the Chief is making his way down. I know there were several speed studies done by the Police Department. They were requested by the Board of Selectmen. Those results were presented to uh, them uh, in consideration for their vote. So this is a uh, complicated question for the last question of the evening, but I'll, I'll try to inform the uh, town meeting members. So the Board of Selectmen, I think having the best intentions in mind, looked at Pinehurst Street concerned about the speed limit. I can honestly tell you with 30 plus years at the Auburn Police Department, Pinehurst Street is the most studied street in the town of Auburn with regards to speed. Whether it was the previous chief, Chief Slucas, or myself with my traffic enforcement team utilizing modern equipment to design the speeds. To give you a little bit of history, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts determines the speed based on the 85th percentile. What does that mean? It means when they look at the average speed of vehicles, average being 50%, the 85th percentile generally determines speeds for state highways and for secondary roadways. So when we looked and studied the speed of Pinehurst Street, the vehicles going from Pinehurst, which joins into Worcester in both directions, the 85th percentile fell right around 40 miles per hour or under, okay? The speeds tend to drop when we have the digital sign displays because people have more of a consciousness of how fast they're going. So I went before the board and I felt it was my obligation to give them that, that information and the board decided to make a vote to change the speed limit from 40 to 30. The problem arose when an official, an engineer from Mass DOT emailed um, the DPW engineer and said that because the town do that, um, be careful what you ask for, because what they took was um, they took the 40 mile per hour signs that are the white and black ones. Those are regulatory signs. Those are the true law that we can use to enforce the speed limit on our roads. The yellow signs that you people may see that we see from time to time on, on some of the secondary roads, those are advisory signs. So here's the problem that this created. So moving the speed limit from 40 to 30, it makes it an advisory sign and essentially non-enforceable by the police department. What makes it non-enforceable is the standard way that police across the Commonwealth and across the country measure speeds. They measure it through radar and they measure it through LIDAR, which is laser technology, which uses speed and distance. That's the standard way, that's the modern way that we use to measure speeds. So the only real way we would be able to measure the speeds of vehicles on Pinehurst Street would be to clock. And clock is using the speedometer of the certified speedometer of the police cruiser that we're driving. You could see how that, that would be problematic and handcuff the police from enforcing the speed limit. So again, I think the intentions of the Board of Selectmen were very, were honorable. And I think that they had the best intentions in mind, but that particular uh, move will in uh, for all purposes, handcuff the police department for enforcing speed on Pinehurst Street. It's a, it's been a major cut through to um, Auburn into Worcester for commerce towards the airport and all of that. It's, it's, it's been that, it's been that way since I was there. I did make some recommendations to the board with regards to uh, digital sign displays, which, we, which has shown has reduced the speed limit in that area, but it is not a red flag road that we have for crashes or pedestrian accidents. Uh, that, like any other road, our crashes, we average probably 
70 to 80 crashes per month in the town of Auburn because of all of our roadways, but they're happening at intersections and they're happening on Route 12 and they're happening on Route 20. So I hope that clarifies a few things. If anybody has a question for me, I'd be happy to answer. And yes, in the middle there. 40. Any other questions or comments? Uh, yes, somebody on the board. So thank you. I, I think this article really is trying to clear up language. It's not about a particular road, even though it mentioned several roads. I'm not disagreeing with anything you said there, but it's really whose authority it is, and it's trying to clean up the bylaw and make sure that we're consistent with Mass General Law. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I just... Oh, Doreen, I'm so well. Yep, Doreen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And I thank the Chief for the explanation. Um, you know, I commend the Board of Selectmen for opening this dialogue on speeds in the town of Auburn. We all hear um, and read about it daily. You know, we all think that people are driving too fast on the streets. Um, and I do commend you for opening this dialogue. I just don't think I'm ready to take this full next step yet. Um, I, I, uh, I think that this is good work that you've begun, but, you know, I just can't support this right now. Yes, Ms. Bowling. Greg Bowling, Precinct 4. I just want to point out, again, this article does not set the speed limits. This article removes items that are in the bylaw that are in direct conflict with state law, which uh, gives the Board of Selectmen the authority to set the speed limits. So all this article does is return that, is clear that up so that we don't end up with a, a conflicting general bylaw to uh, state law. Anybody else? Seeing nobody, then let us vote. What was the point of order? No, it's okay. No, I was going to say, I thought, you know, I mean, people don't have to vote, you know. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. I want to touch this with a Jimmy Bolt. Okay. Yes, 36. No, 43. Zero. It did not pass. And I would now welcome a motion to dissolve. And Thanking you all. Great town meeting, people. <laughs>